Den første, vi skal se på scenen, det er Slotty Cosplay, som cosplayer Siri from The Witcher 3 Wonders. Disney princesses. She made this 
cosplay because it was a dream to try and make a big glittery dress. The skirt is a full circle and both the skirt and the top have lining attached on the inside which conceal all visible seam lines. <laughs> Underneath there's a complete set of underwear, corset and other shirt. The glitter pattern in the outer skirt is self-designed based on the little details that could be seen at the reference picture. Besides that, a few other extra details such as the hairpin, the bag and the shoes were added to give a finishing to touch to the look. The embroidery at the belt was her second attempt with the skill and it's always too good. And it's always good to have a bag for ladies stuff. The hairline on top of the wig was re-sewed and extra hair attached. Afterwards, a little pillow was sewed into the front hair, and the wig was curled in the bottom to give a big, fluffy, and wavy look. Thank you! and 
dramatic personality of the character. When making the costume itself, it turned out to be quite a challenge, which seems appropriate, appropriate since she wanted to challenge herself in the sewing and prop department. Accuracy was key during the crafting of the cosplay. This meant that she spent a lot of time finding reference pictures, which only caused more confusion since the design shifted from image to image, but that also meant that she got to put her own flair on it. Her choice of fabric was primarily satin, due to the slight shine it gives. And since the character is a fairy in this version, it would fit perfectly. The fabric parts are all lined to give it a nice finish, and the ability to stay cozy in this chilly weather. The pattern for the dress was a modified one, while the ones for the jacket, shoes, and sleeves was drafted from scratch. She also hand-painted details on the cosplay, such as the shoe cover details, and the white lines on the stocking. For the wand, the primary, the primary materials were used... Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. The primary materials that were used was foam clay, wire, and a ton of wood glue. The sword, however, has a base of foam and wood, with the hilt details being made of foam plate. Her favorite part to make was definitely either the sword or wand, since both were crafted quite peacefully. Thank you! <laughs> Yeah, mute him as well. <laughs> Next up is Maruna, cosplaying Templar Assassin from Dota 2. <laughs> the armor pieces are made from EVA foam, primed with plastic dip, and painted with airbrush colors. She used nylon string and transparent plastic to make it look like the shoulder armor is floating. It took a long time to knot all the connections and get the distances between the pieces just right. For the wig, she used a dark blue base and sewed in purple and pink wefts before applying a lot of hairspray. The top of the dress is made from an old t-shirt onto which she glued the purple fabric straps. And the bottom of the dress is made from jersey and fake leather. The breastplate is a separate piece and is made from work knot and covered in the same fabrics. Because of the belt, it looks like it's one piece with the blue skirt. Additional shading was added to all fabric pieces with the airbrush. This is not Maruna's first cosplay with body painting, so she feels pretty confident about it. She mixed a combination of pink, white, and black cream makeup to get the right shade. Even though the, even though the makeup is her favorite part of this costume, she looks forward to showering a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cosplay. Cosplaying Evie from Descendants 2. Penguin has chosen to cosplay. 
asked with Evie because she got the impression that she had more to her than just designing clothes. She had this badass vibe. Besides that, Penguin absolutely loves evening gowns and this one had everything. Bling, a veil, it was long and has the pattern of branches. The dress is a simple one-shoulder A-line dress with a train and a chiffon veil. The wig is 80 centimeters and styled with five, five braids curled in a low bun. All the jewelry, the crown, ring, bracelets, necklace and earrings is made from rhinestones, chains and red heart shaped Varoski stones. Both her favorite and least favorite part of the dress is the sequence pattern, which consists of 250 meters of sequins and every last one of them is hand sewn on. Thank you. The huge scarves and bulky pants definitely help tying everything together. And that is just an extra plus that it feels super comfortable, even if it doesn't look at me. Thank you. Thinking 
figuring out how to make all the pieces fit together. The part that was the most frustrating was how to make the two upper parts fit together, as they are actually one piece of clothing. Having to make the templates almost from scratch, it took a great deal of time to make sure it was fit perfectly together. The pants and boots were much easier for her to make, as it could be made in three pieces instead of one. All the fabric used is cotton. Zippers were used to keep the fabric around the arm tight, and also used in the pants and the back of the yellow upper part to make a close fit for the turtleneck. Her favorite part of the costume is the boots. Not only are they really com comfortable, they are also the first pair of boots that she's ever made. She, <laughs> she also went gold on purpose just for this cosplay. The same method has been used on the cloth staff, whereas the gemstone on top is made out of a cheap water bottle that's been heated, that's been heat shaped, and covered in transparent thermoplastic in order to give it a shiny gloss. The chains are made from scratch as well, and consist of 100 individually sculpted chain links. Parts of the cosplay are lit up by LEDs to give it a more magical look. The most challenging part of the costume was the body paint, which is still in new territory. No dragons were harmed in the making of this project. Thank you. Lace front, 
sorry, on this front, which has been cut and styled as well as had its roots dyed with two different shades of alcohol-based margaritas. The hair decorations are holy leaves, fox holy berries made from the historical technique of using dried peas dipped in red sealing wax, and finally, the horn combs are made from an ox horn that's been warmed with oil, bent into sheets, sawed, sanded, sanded, polished, and oiled. Thank you! The two white kimonos consist of a light and heavy woven cotton. The light weave, the light weave feels soft against your skin, as it kind of works as an undershirt. The hakama pants are heavy woven cotton, dip dyed in a gray gradient and decorated with gold foil details. The leather armor pieces are made from faux leather. Their pattern piece is sculpted onto her own body in order to fit her perfectly. Caspian sword is made from EVA foam, prime, painted by airbrush, hand shaded, and coated with a nice satin finish to give it the shine of a sword. The golden armor pieces were the most tedium, tedious things to make. She hand cut 387 small holes in total, which took her roughly three days. Then she sanded it, primed it, airbrushed it, and hand shaded it before adding the dip dyed ribbon that goes through the many, many holes and keeps the armor together. Caspian did her best to stay true to the Japanese style, both in choice of fabric as well as when making the patterns for the costume. Overall, she's quite happy with the result and has finally achieved her oldest cosplay dream. Thank you! Make a giant hood and attach adorable little bunny ears to it. Thank you! Yeah! 